This is your host, Abdul Bharti, and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. Today, we have with us Ajay Patel, SVP and GM of Modern Application Platform Business at VMware. Ajay, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for inviting us. Appreciate uh, the opportunity. I want to learn from you, what is the focus of this business unit? A really exciting opportunity for me personally, uh, when Pat asked me to take over what we call the Modern Application Platform Business Unit. Now, the business unit is really a combination of our pivotal acquisition, our earlier acquisition with Heptio in the Kubernetes space, and some of the work we had done originally with Bitnami and several other uh, organic and inorganic efforts within the company. So the challenge is very simple. You know, How do we make it easy for our customers, our partners, both ISV communities, et cetera, to help get, so, so, you know, get good software or great software in production faster? And in that notion, VM has traditionally been a great infrastructure company. How do we bring the application view and more and more what I call a platform operational view in this world of multi-cloud? So our charter simply is make modern application building on multi-cloud easy. And the team's really focused on both the infrastructure modernization piece of it and the application modernization piece of it or new development piece of it, if you will. Uh, for, for our customers. What is the role Kubernetes and Tanzu are playing, especially in your business unit, because it is a critical piece of VMware? So VMware very early, you know, quickly recognized that Kubernetes is becoming the ubiquitous uh, runtime, if you will, uh, for multi-cloud. If you look across the clouds, uh, you know, I come from an old Java days and JVM days. You know, it has the same promise of the infrastructure in terms of providing that kind of ubiquity or the dial tone on which you can start to deploy applications and provide a platform on which you can build on, right? Uh, and so with, the, uh, with Joe Beta and, uh, and Craig McClucky joining the team early on to the Heptio acquisition, we really went all in on Kubernetes. Uh, we're at, at, at this stage, I think, the number two committer for Kubernetes and often a number one committer in some of the special projects that we drive. So a pretty big commitment and investment in Kubernetes. And we really believe it's changing the game in terms of how developers have access to infrastructure. The right, and it kind of gives you kind of a meta platform on which you can start to build out a capabilities that allow you to get the software into production faster, give you the agility that customers are looking for. It's like kind of right level of abstraction. Uh, you might have heard Joe Beta talk about kind of the Goldilocks abstraction. And so we believe Kubernetes is really the foundation for Tanzu and even VMware. And we, in VMworld, uh, if you saw the big announcement really was finally the realization of our vision of making vSphere kind of that single platform for VMs and containers with Kubernetes kind of built right into or baked right into vSphere both as an API for vSphere itself. So we re-architected vSphere itself uh, using Kubernetes as a, as a model, but also making it a great runtime for running containers in Kubernetes. So for us, it's foundational right at the vSphere core, kind of the granddaddy, and then being able to build with Tanzu and the portfolio above. So pretty much a central to our strategy. Can you talk about uh, not only the evolution of the uh, Tanzu portfolio, and also uh, if there are any key milestones that it has achieved um, can you share some more insights into that? Yeah, I think the key milestones, I always think in terms of uh, customer adoption, right? Uh, if, and, and, and classically, people uh, used to measure what we call AI instances, right? We now have millions of application instances in production. Uh, I can't get into the specific names of a customer, but a large financial services company is, has gone all in on building a private cloud using the Tanzu portfolio. Equally, we have companies that are starting to launch and use services on AKS, for example. Uh, where a great announcement uh, coming into uh, Spring One was a partnership with Microsoft. We launched something called Azure Spring Cloud, where a developer can even get started right, with simply using Spring and going into production on top of AKS. So this, this breadth of capability that we delivered that gives customers choice, right? Build using Spring, go to cloud native using the skills you have with Java and Spring, run on Kubernetes any way you choose, including non-VMware, AKS, right? Start to provide manageability value. The big strength we saw was our announcement of Tanzu Mission Control. Tanzu Mission Control now gives you the single place to manage your Kubernetes environment, not just Kubernetes, but if you think about the role of developers and SRE function, you need observability. We brought observability natively into the platform. You start to think about service mesh and container networking. If you're building microservices, what is becoming more and more important is networking. Our acquisition of Avi, our, our ability to kind of bring in some of the service mesh components with visibility and tying that all together, you're starting to see a new fabric emerging, right? A distributed runtime to support applications built on Kubernetes natively, allowing you to leverage cloud services where it makes sense, 
but having that portability where it makes sense. So to me, the, the impact of the announcement is, is not yet felt, right? We, we are just at the tip of a platform that's emerging that's truly going to be the way companies build new applications, but also how they modernize applications. So to me, coming in almost uh, to a year's mark, it's a culmination of many things VMware is building in the, kind of in the individual functional areas, whether it's networking or observability or development for through pivotal, pivotal, but bringing that all together. I think we're the only company that we believe can bring applications and infrastructure together in a multi-cloud world. And when we do talk about multi-cloud world or cloud native in general, if you just look at CNCF landscape, it's so massive that you need 16K monitor just to see everything which you can actually identify as an icon. It's a, it's a cloud space and the users sometimes are challenged with picking up so many components which are out there. So can you talk about uh, that's, what are the challenges that with your interaction with the customer, actually VMworld or Spring One is very good you know, place where you interact with customer, but unfortunately it was virtual, so there was no such uh, opportunity. But still, based on the conversations, uh, what challenges customers are still facing that Tanzo is trying to enter and help solve them? If you look at what's happening in the marketplace, the biggest challenge these customers facing is there's a lot of marketing noise about what Kubernetes is and what the potential is. But if you get to the complexity of using Kubernetes, the amount of YAML configurations and the number of open source technology you have to bring together, it's pretty daunting, right? And so if you're in Netflix and you have that kind of DNA and you're a sophisticated development organization, it's great. But if you think about a typical enterprise organization that's coming from a, you know, a three-tier application architecture using standard Java tools, Spring Boot, Spring MVC still being kind of the, the, the mainstream or .NET being the mainstream. You're trying to educate this community to move to a, a cloud native architecture. So how do you make it simple? How do you take from code to deployment to production and operate? That continues to be a challenge. So what we're looking to do is bring the best of open source technology, get a little bit more opinionated, if you will, in terms of how best to wire this thing, to create those developer workflows. And in that, in that model, we're starting to teach, you know, in many of our organizations, what is the role of a platform operation? We often use the word platform as a product. How does IT start to deliver a development infrastructure or a workflow for the developer so that it is opinionated in form, but gives them a fair amount of control and flexibility? How do you mix the left shift developer control with just the right guardrails and the simplicity where developers don't have to write all this code to get their, code, uh, their application to production? That's a balance we're all still trying to figure out. We solved it with Cloud Foundry, right? It was a very opinionated stack for a class of application patterns. How do you bring that same value upstream to a larger set of developers for a larger set of application patterns? I think that is really the opportunity for Tanzu, or effectively anybody out there, right? And we hope to compete and win in this market on our strength of our knowledge of how we've done it for customers before with Cloud Foundry and make it more mainstream. So continue to invest in the PaaS offering, make it mainstream and the mainstream or kind of making it scale is the, is the market opportunity or the, or the complexity customers are dealing with, right? How do I get 3,000, 30,000 developers in my org effectively pro productive in a multi-cloud world, right? How do I manage this at scale, right? These are not problems that are solved today, in my view, right? And since you mentioned uh, Cloud Foundry and through Pivotal, you know, uh, VMware is, you know, heavily involved there and you're also involved heavily in Kubernetes. Uh, Sometimes people see Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes as a versus, that is not true. It's always and, you know, people are, there are a lot of uh, customers, they have heavy investment in Cloud Foundry. They also want to leverage Kubernetes. So can you talk about, you know, how do you juggle between these two words while the focus is to help customers. It's not about the platform or the technology. So if, you know, I used to basically, you know, draw a mind map which says, you know, Cloud Foundry was very effective for the enterprise uh, 500 or the Fortune 1000. It was a significant commitment where some central IT team stood up a platform and then made it really easy for developers to come. That value proposition we used to call the five S's, right? And the five S's, if you just do a search on Pivotal 5S, you'll see about security, stability, you know, performance, uh, scale, et cetera. But as you start to think about the, the, the typical developer living in, and starting on the cloud, whether it's VMware cloud or a public cloud, you know, they're being given a set of low level services and a YAML file. They had to go download CI CD tools, bring it all together. So as you start to think about it, it's become clear that there's a lot of value Kubernetes brings, but you still want that developer CF push experience. And even if you look at my competitors, they're all mimicking. It's kind of, you know, imitation is a form of flattery, right? They're all trying to mimic the CF push experience 
on top of a Kubernetes environment, whether it's OpenShift, whether even the latest announcement from Hashi, et cetera. They're all trying to bring that ease of simplicity for, of development and, and production delivery on top of a platform. And what we're starting to provide is say, how can we provide some common building blocks? You know, if you need common content and images, how do we make Bitnami content images available, whether you're in a CF push Cloud Foundry environment or you, and you do it yourself, you know, turnkey solution that you're looking to build through an IT platform. We're starting to modularize the environment as well as bring the power of Kubernetes to Cloud Foundry. So they work, you'll see later on this year, we're announcing TAS for Kates, a TANZU application service for Kubernetes. It brings a lot of the Cloud Foundry capabilities that people like on top of a modern Kubernetes runtime. Continue to support and bring a lot of the Bosch capability of release management to a Kubernetes world. So it's not A or B, it's A and B. It is a continuum. It really comes back to philosophy and your set of capability that you want to offer to your developers. How much flexibility and control? How much opinionation, right? And we give them the choice. We're starting to unify that roadmap across our set of capabilities, leveraging the strength of Kubernetes and the open source projects that are emerging in the market, but taking leadership in there, right? So commitment to open source, putting it in production, integrating it, delivering a great day two offering and giving customer that choice across clouds. The hard part now is it's not just one endpoint, it's across Kubernetes, which is why TAN's emission control and those become key elements of a strategy. It will allow you to manage any Kubernetes environment and the lines will start to blur between an IaaS build it yourself environment in a TAS environment, in my view, as we evolve in this market. Ajay, uh, thank you for taking your time out today to talk about uh, what VMware is doing in this space. Before we uh, wrap up, any closing thoughts that you have for our audience? No, again, first, thank you for the opportunity to be uh, on your show. Uh, I think I'd leave uh, customers and my partners with one thing. VMware is very much committed to open source. Modern application business unit is really about moving VMware from infrastructure to be a leader in application and application development. Uh, you'll see strong position from us in terms of support for open source ISV community, strong commitment to ISVs looking to operate in the multi-cloud world, and a focus on moving customers to modernize the infrastructure and application. Uh, continue to be partner with, with everyone in the community. Right? It's a world of cooperation. We will be partnering and competing, and we look to really work with many of you uh, in the many in weeks, days to come. Thank you. <laughs>